perhaps some others will join us uh, tonight. I hope so. Uh, I think Mary just uh, just joined us. And so welcome, Mary. Uh, okay, in Joel chapter 1, verse 12, it says that the vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree and the palm tree and the apple tree and all the trees of the field are withered. Now we are called trees planted by the Lord. And so the Lord sees us as um, trees that produce fruit. And surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Now, this is what the, the prophet Joel was seeing. He was, he, was, he was a seer and he looked and that's what he saw. He saw all of the trees that were supposed to be producing fruit the apple tree, the fig tree, the pomegranate tree, they were all withered away. And because the joy had left those trees. And so as, as children of the Lord, we are to stay full of his joy. Amen. Stay full. Okay. Well, how do we how do we do that? And so tonight we're going to uh, talk about uh, that wonderful force uh, that is supposed to be in our lives, uh, and that's joy. Psalm 1611, it says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So this is, this is I'm just giving some foundation right now. This this is where we accumulate joy. Where it comes into us is by being in the presence of the Lord, uh, by praying in the spirit, by being around other spiritual people, just so that, that we can sense that the presence of the Lord is there. And then there's joy. And I know I've been in conferences, Brother Fred and I've been in, in meetings uh, that had thousands of people, and all of a sudden, laughter breaks forth. The, that spirit of joy just takes over, and the people begin to laugh, and they laugh, and they laugh, and they laugh. And of course, we've talked about how Brother Fred uh, has taught this family, our family, to laugh. And in something that may start out in the natural, you may start laughing in the natural, but then it turns into a supernatural force and it produces joy. That is the fruit. And we, and we are to be producing fruit. I'll get to more, more of that in just a moment. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says, For we are God's co-workers. We are God's partners. You are God's field, and you are God's building. Hallelujah. And so when you partner with the Lord, it's going to produce joy with you. Amen. When you come together in, in doing kingdom work, Jesus Christ is the king of the kingdom. And so when we, it says that we are co-laborers with him. And when we do that is really we're partnering with him and we're receiving the benefits. Amen. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. And one of those benefits is joy. It's joy. And remember, we've talked about count it all joy, turning your troubles into opportunities that's what we uh discussed last week so let's keep our joy container filled up so that we're strong Amen. and we're mighty and we're a force in the universe mm -hmm. hallelujah hallelujah mm -hmm. you know it's it's interesting because there's times when um uh sister becky and i uh, have ministered together for so long that 
I will sense if she's in the building. Uh, I can walk into a restaurant and and I sense the force. I call it the force uh, because she is a force and, and, and I sense that. And so we want to feel his presence and we want to know uh, that he is there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that he hasn't left the building. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And so we want to produce that fruit. Now, as a foundation, I want to go to Matthew chapter 25. Now, we are in the last day. The last day, D-A-Y. Not days, but in the last day. And there's many things that are coming together uh, that will, that signify the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is, this is a very important chapter, Matthew 25. It starts out with the 10 virgins. And then it goes into the parable of the talents. And that's what I want to, to cover tonight. And uh, so let's, let's go to Matthew 25 uh, verses 14 through 18. And we're going to talk about three things. Now, I want you to think about as we go over this parable, I want you to think about these three things, because this is what I saw when I was studying this parable. I saw judgment. I saw accountability. And I saw fruitfulness. I saw judgment, accountability and fruitfulness. And so let's 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 read the scripture and then we will discuss it. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. Well, that's the Lord who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. So the Lord has given you everything. Doesn't it say that we have his nature? It says that we have the mind of Christ. Uh, we are his body. We are his hands, his feet, his mouth, his eyes, his ears. It says he delivered all of his goods to them. And to one, he gave five talents. And to another, he gave two talents. To another, he gave one talent. And to each according to his own ability and immediately he went on his journey. Okay. Now let's think about this. Let's think about judgment. And let's think about accountability. And let's think about fruitfulness. These are three things that the Lord is looking for. He is looking for that in you and in me, in Brother Fred, in all of us. All of his children, all of his children. Let's go to verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Now, some people, this is not really talking about uh, trading on the stock market or uh, this. This is, let's look at this from a spiritual perspective. What has God given you? Has he given you hospitality? Has he given you uh, the gift of wisdom? Uh, has he given you discerning of spirits? Has he given you prophecy? What, what has he given you? What is on the inside of you that you feel like the Lord wants to utilize? Wow, 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 wow. I pray, Father, right now that you will seal this message to our hearts. Amen. Help us to understand. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to understand more of what the Lord is expecting out of me. Amen. What is he expecting out of you? That's right. This person who who had he gave five talents to went and traded and made five more 
What are we looking for? Judgment, accountability, and fruitfulness. Okay. And then likewise, the one who had two talents gained two more. But verse 18, listen to this. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Okay. He hid what God gave to him. We are an earthen vessel. And if God has put prophecy in you and you're not prophesying, then you're not going to be fruitful. Do you see that? Do you see where I'm going with this message tonight? In Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said, after he came to the one, he came back and, and he, he said to the one that had gained five more talents, he, he said this to him. And he also said it to the one who had made two more talents. He said this to them. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter, listen to this, enter into the joy of the Lord. If you want more joy, I'm just going to give you the bottom line of this message. If you want more joy, then do the will of the Lord. Do what he has called you to do. You know, joy was talking about destiny. You know, destiny is such an important word to all of us. Because we are destined to be just like Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are destined to be sons of God. And we are destined to be rulers. We are destined... Uh, to prosper. Hallelujah. I like this message. You like this message? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I believe that this is a an end time message for all of us. That we need to. It says if we judge our, if we judge, it's judgment under victory. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But. As we judge, as we are an account, we are accountable to the Lord with what he has given us. If you're an intercessor, are you praying? Oh, hallelujah. If you, if you are uh, one who is an organizer, an administrator. See, Joy has an administrative gift. She knows how to put things together. You know, uh, Mary is an encourager. She, she has that gift of encouragement. Wendy has that, that gift of being able to, to separate things and to know how things fit together. And then new song. Praise the name of Jesus. You are, you have that ability to see things down the road. You have, you have sight. You have spiritual sight in the name of Jesus. And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, young May, uh, you have that ability, uh, to speak. You have the ability. God has given you a talent to speak to others. Uh, and they will have understanding and they will comprehend, uh, what you're saying. Hallelujah. So are we using those giftings? Are we using what God has given us? Are, are we planting it in the ground? Are we just keeping it to ourselves? That's not going to produce joy for us. In fact, it's going to produce other things. The Lord is not happy with that now let's talk about these three areas judgment accountability and fruitfulness in psalm 7 verse 8 it says the lord shall judge the people judge me O lord the king david is saying judge me O lord 
according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. And then Psalm 711, God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every single day. Every single day. They get no slack. They get no slack. <laughs> Psalm 67, 4. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on the earth. And it says, think on these things. Pause and think on these things. And then Psalm 96, 13. Before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. You know, in Revelation 1911, 19, 19, go ahead and quote it, Brother Fred. Um, I saw heaven open and a white horse. And he that sat upon the white horse was called faithful and true. And with justice, he does judge and make war. Amen. Amen. Well, he's looking at you. And he's looking at me. He's looking at Brother Fred. He says, are you, are you using what I gave you? Are you being good stewards of the, the, the giftings of the Lord? Well, you know, we are to be like Jesus. We are to, Amen. with justice, bring judgment on the head of the enemy. Amen. And make war against him. Amen. To bring freedom to God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 98, 9. Before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Oh, hallelujah. With righteousness, he shall judge the world and the people with equality or with equity. With equity. He's fairness. He's, fairness. he's going to be fair with us. Hallelujah. But then in Matthew 20, 20, I mean 1220, a bruised reed he shall not break. And a smoking flax he will not quench till he sends justice unto victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So victory, when you have victory, you have joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory when you're victorious. When you, the situation has, has passed over and, and there's victory there. Hallelujah. Let me give a quick uh, example of testimony, Sherry, about uh, uh, justice, because we believe this is a very important concept. Right. Uh, God makes, he does judgment. He brings justice. And his justice is about fairness and what's right. And uh, the world has a limited view, very limited view of what justice is. But God has this uh, very great view of justice and he brings justice uh, to the simplest uh, situations if we ask for it. But now if we don't ask for the justice, we don't get it. That's, um, that's something, something that we found out long ago that uh, if, if it's in the natural, you may have to go get a, a lawyer to represent you and ask for justice. You want justice. But in the, in the supernatural realm, ask for justice uh, whatever in any time you have experienced an injustice. And uh, I may have given you this uh, example about my uh, daughter-in-law that uh, at, on, uh, I believe it was September the 28th uh, of this year, uh, they let her go. She was an executive in a company, a national company, and they let her go. And because they were losing profits and they fired all of their executives uh, and, and uh, a week or two later they fired the uh, chief executive officer who made those decisions <laughs> but when she told me that uh, she had uh, that her company had let her go i said this is injustice and we have to ask for justice we have to war for justice uh, for your uh, benefit and uh, this um uh, Past Monday, she started her new job as a uh, as a senior vice president. Yes, amen. Senior vice president of another national company, 
that's doing much better profitably uh, than that company. So she received justice. In the natural, there was no way to receive justice. Uh, the company uh, had to let people go because of profit situation. But I said, this has nothing to do with your productivity, Amen. your uh, what you're doing, your integrity, your faithfulness has nothing to do with, the, with that. So we're going to go to the courts of heaven and ask for justice. And she received justice. And now she's a senior vice president of another company, Amen. a company that's much on much better grounds financially. And she's making a lot more money than she did earlier. We have to ask God for justice. We've all suffered injustices and we need to war for justice for ourselves, for our spouse, for our children, for our families. We need to war for justice. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to give you another uh, wonderful testimony and that's about our, our youngest grandson who is a freshman in high school. Uh, some other boys uh, got together and they thought it was a big joke uh, to go and tell one of the teachers uh, that he said that he was going to come to school and shoot up the school. And so they suspended our, our grandson and they said, well, we're going to have to do an investigation. The police were called in and and he couldn't go back to school. Well, when they told us about it, the same thing happened. Brother Fred and I said, this is an injustice. And, and our grandson said that he did not say anything like that. He didn't say anything at all. And that these boys were trying to play a joke on him. And, and so we said, okay, well, we're going to pray for justice. And today, this morning, uh, I found out that that the investigation is over with and they found him not guilty and they are allowing him to go back to school. And and I just I give the Lord praise for that. There's great joy Hallelujah. that comes yes. when God judges the enemy. Yes, amen. Woo! Hallelujah. And the, devil, and the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Amen. And so that was the devil that uh, caused all of that harassment against our grandson. Amen. Uh, but he has been reinstated and he has received justice. Hallelujah. 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 And then let's go to 1 Peter 4, 17, which I love this scripture because this is where we are with with the church today with the body of christ and it says in first peter 4 17 for the time has come it's right now for judgment to begin at the house of god that's where it's going to begin hallelujah and so we need to be doing our jobs Amen. we need to be functioning hallelujah and, and why is judgment going to begin with us because we know about it. Yeah. We have the knowledge, we have the understanding, we have the unction of the Holy Spirit to ask for justice. That's why it's going to begin yeah. with us. Amen. Amen. We're the ones with the tools and the knowledge and Hallelujah. the understanding to bring judgment on the head of the, the enemy, enemy and justice for God's people. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God. And so it, it begins with us, as Brother Fred said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then let's go to the second point, and that is accountability. He's holding you accountable to use what he has given you. Woo! If he has given you healing, then you need to be praying for people to be healed. He says, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Hallelujah. You need to be bringing that message of healing. There were so many years that we were, Brother Fred and I were Christians. We loved the Lord, but we knew nothing, zero, about healing. Because nobody had said anything to us. Nobody had taught us that Jesus Christ still heals Amen. today. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody. Thank 
Jesus. You know, they were lovely people. They made great casseroles, but they knew nothing about healing. And so every time one of our children got sick, then the next one would get sick, the next one would get sick, and Sherry and I then would get sick, and it just kept going around and around over and over again. Amen. We had no understanding of how to stop it. We didn't know that healing is in the redemptive work of Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. that he performed on the cross. Hallelujah. 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 Accountable. So he's holding us accountable in Romans 14, 12. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Remember the parable of the five talents and the two talents and the one talent? The Lord came back. The Lord came back, didn't he? And he says, what have you done with those five talents? What have you done with those two talents? What have you done with that one talent? So he is holding us accountable. Oh, well, I have a busy schedule. I can't get to that. I'm supposed to be praying, but I just don't have time to pray. Oh, I'm supposed to be uh, an encourager but I'm not going to encourage anybody today. Mm. You know, Sherry, we, we were in Mexico last week and, and there was a young boy uh, there with us, uh, maybe 14, I don't know. If, uh, but he gets up every morning at uh, four or four o'clock, four o'clock in the morning or mm -hmm. 4.30 mm -hmm. so that he can do his exercise, do his devotion, do his praying. Amen. I, I was so impressed that yeah. this, just this young teenage boy uh, would get up at that time of the morning and uh, uh, do the exercises, and, but, his, but he did his devotion. He was very uh, systematic and dedicated and diligent. He did his devotions. He did his prayers, and then he would go take his shower, and then he'd get ready and go, go, to, uh, school. go, to, go to school. Go to school. And we think, oh, we just don't have time to pray. And then that young boy yeah. uh, just really uh, just knocked my socks off to think that he yeah. would do that every day. Well, see, God is raising up the next generation. And he's making them mighty. And he's making them bold and courageous. But we can be bold and courageous ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to see more of that. Remember the word for 2024, hear God roar in 2024. That means that the lion is walking, that the voice of God is going to penetrate, oh, and invade the earth. Hallelujah. And we're going to hear it in the government. We're going to hear it. What do you think Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, who is spirit-filled and prophesied to, before he got in there as Speaker of the House, a prophet said, you're going to be the next Speaker of the House. And he said, I'm not even, I'm not even a candidate. And the very next week, he was unanimously put in as Speaker of the House. What was one of the first things was, he did? Was, was to pray, pray publicly. Hallelujah. 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 God has his people. He's raising them He's up. He's raising them up. And he's putting them in key strategic positions. George, you're in a strategic position in your firm. Hallelujah. In the place that you work, you are placed there by the Lord. It's not an accident that God puts you there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. Hallelujah. So are you using what God gave you? What did he give you? Somebody, I'm just going to stop right here. Tell me something that you feel like God has put on the inside.